Hi. Yeah, Paddy. I just want to talk about how the season's going. Yeah, yeah, I know it's going well. Yeah, I know we haven't lost. That's that's that that's why I wanted to have a quick chat, you know, as as manager to captain. Um, yeah, it's getting a little suspicious, if I'm honest. I think um, the anti we're probably on the radar of the anti doping agency, and quite frankly, I don't want to miss out on the World Cup 2022. Yeah, I know it doesn't apply to me, but still. Um, oh, what do you mean you try to throw a game live? That's the FA Cup. We need to win that one. I mean, we still be won in the replay anyway, so it's not like that matters, but that's financially useful to us. Don't throw the FA Cup matches for crying out loud. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. Obviously, just keep playing. We know, we know we still want to make it look like we're trying to win, but, you know, if we lose, it's not the worst thing in the world. Just just saying. Um, is there anything else you want to chat about? Your playing time? Oh, um... Oh, sorry. I think I think I'm just getting another call. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, I think I got away with that. Yeah. Hello. Welcome back. Uh, we have played. Well, we've played four games in the interim since we last met. It should have only been three, but. We made a meal of Blythe a little bit. Uh, in fairness, in fairness, I did stick out a weakened team against them. And obviously in this kind of level of football, the gap between Vanarama National and the National North isn't that dramatic, to be honest. So even weakening the team somewhat, we should expect a little bit of a harder fight, depending on how good they're doing in Blythe. But yeah, at home, 0-0, one one nil away instead, just to make things more difficult for ourselves. Chelmsford was a nice, easy 2-0. All sorted by the first half. Lopez on the score sheet. And then a 0-0 against Torquay, actually, as well. So, away from home, though, uh, Ethan Walker with a 6.1 he ended up at. Blimey. I didn't even realise that. However, Wild is on the horizon in the Vanarama National. They are currently sat in third. And we did draw Hednesford in the FA Cup first round. Now, Hednesford are in the Vanarama National League North. They are the division below us. But the reason why you don't recognise their name is the fact they were promoted, actually, from the seventh tier last year. So, realistically, this is almost a two-division divide between ourselves, but I'm still going to bring it, you, bring it to you. It is the FA Cup first round, and uh, I kind of feel like it's, at the very least, at this stage of the journey, particularly, considering how well the actual league, how well the league situation is going on this one, the fact that it's actually looking fairly likely we might end up in the actual League 2 next year, way ahead of schedule, like a good three seasons or so ahead of what I was expecting to happen, then it does make sense to bring you as much of this journey in the non-league section as possible. And so I've been doing a lot of thinking about that, actually, as well. Because obviously the further you go on, that if you sort of start spending multiple seasons in one division, then you start, typically as a content creator, you tend to sort of start speeding through those following seasons and not showing, not showing you as much of that. So if I'm only going to spend one year in this division, then I'd better show you as much of it as possible, really. <laughs> Shouldn't I? So... And particularly at this level, FA Cup runs are kind of important. So even though they are bottom end of the division below, I'm going to bring you head in the today along with the foul match. And just an update, seven points clear. Now, the only advantage of everything that's going on right now, uh, the fact that we are seven points clear, is, of course, there's only one team automatically promoted at this level. So if you if we are going to run away with it, then these are the divisions to do it in, in fairness. And the team, by the way, is basically as you've seen it all season. Is Ferguson back yet? No. Okay, so I just want to make sure if that factored into my decision with boys. Now, boys' recent recent matches haven't been as woeful. They sort of ticked up a little bit from the 6.5. Not not getting into the 7s at any point, but 6.6, 6.7, 6.8 a couple of times in recent matches. So starting to get it a little bit, I think, maybe, hopefully. Uh, the only issue with this match is three players on yellow cards. So if any of these guys pick up a yellow card in this match, then they will be out for the next league match. Kind of need to play them in this one because this part, of course, are in the chasing pack. But the good news is we are basically full strength for this one. I say basically full strength because Stanley has done incredibly well in that right ring ro role. Now, strictly speaking, Bennett is regarded as the better player in that in that in that position. Not by much, but he is. However, Benning got injured very early on, and therefore Stanley had to step in. And I have played Benning a couple of times since he's been back. And, uh, well, you can see his average rating there. Yeah, 6.46 in the last five matches for him. 
it's not exactly amazing. Now, the situation in Hedersford, of course, is that we can possibly play a few players who need to get a little bit more match fitness or returning from injury or something like that. Just because there's almost a two division. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to underestimate them. But at the same time, it is an opportunity to maybe get a couple of players in who haven't really featured too much. So it's another reason to really to go full strength for this one. In fairness, as well. So I expect nothing but a win from this match to keep a good run going. Yes, I do. Now, Filed, you may remember, did feature a few episodes back in the FA Trophy, when, of course, we were the division below them, in an entertaining two-legged semi-final in that FA Trophy. And uh, so we are actually undefeated against them currently. Uh, two matches played already against them. Uh, I think it was, it was two draws. Was it two draws in the penalty shootout, or did we actually win in extra time? I can't actually remember now. Oh, God. Um, but Dingwall for them. We are balanced. Uh, sh maybe should go positive. We are at home. But Walker... Takes over this ball and runs all the way across the pitch almost and gives it to his other winger, Stanley, on this side here. Now, Walker didn't have a great game last time, as you saw by the average rating. So hopefully he can do a bit better. Uh, well, it's Stanley that's messed up there. But their player is crowded out somewhat. Dan's is also forced to go backwards. Boom is way ahead of Phyllis Kirk, but essentially tees it up for him and we get away with it. But D. Williams on this ball here. Walker will give it probably back to him. Yes, he does. Williams, once again, back to Walker. It's probably going to get worked backwards. No, back out to Williams again. Williams again, a lot of the ball here, but nothing really coming of it. I'm going kind of worried that it's going to get poached, and it does. And Phyllis Kirk is through, because well, I'm not sure where Romano is right now, but Phyllis Kirk has gone wide, and that made it easier for Smith. I'm going to shout at them. Fard are actually a lot more tired than we are, I just noticed. Boys, Lopez. Out on the side, just gives it to them again. That's great, great news. Now, Phyllis Kirk is probably going to turn... No, is he going to turn Romano here? No. Rosedale. Jay Williams is through, though, and um, not entirely concerned where our defence is going, but it doesn't matter because he's decided the goal is somewhere in the corner. This is actually genuinely woeful from us. We're actually having a bad game. Well, they're going a little bit more tacky now, apparently. Neither side neither side really coming up with much here, as that gets to half time at 0-0. I'm actually going to be aggressive with this lot. The bit, of the, beginning, the bit of the beginning was just a joke. I don't want them to throw a game. Now, I know, in, obviously, in terms of the team, it does feel like I've done, obviously, quite a lot of good transfer business because the team as a whole clearly works. But I can't feel there's some players I've brought in that just don't really cut the mustard. This has got to 75 minutes without a further highlight. This is a far, far cry from the <laughs> FA Trophy scenes that we had with them. Nacelle is probably one of these. I'm going to highlight him now just in the middle of the match just because I don't really know about Nacelle. Nacelle is a little confusing to me. Now, naturally, he was a star player. I think he's still regarded as one of the best players in this division, as he was last time around. But very rarely does he actually put in a very, very good performance. Now, he had a 9.0 here against Havant, of course, one goal, one assist. But otherwise, he does tend to be fairly anonymous. 6.5, 6 6.6, and 6.4s. Basically, plays every match. But occasionally, he has a very, very good game. But his average rating is technically 7 because of these, some of these really good ones in there. But I don't know, for a player that is regarded as a star player, or very much was a star player last year, there's a couple of players now technically better than him. I just don't know. Not necessarily endeared himself into my love entirely just yet, like, you know, Romano and Boom. Because Romano, Boom and Lopez, they didn't necessarily start particularly well, but they are now at the very least. But Nacel never really had that. Anyway, uh, let's get him off. <laughs> bring Block on, bring Block back down there. Uh, any of the front line not doing particularly well? Ethan Walker's on a 6.6. .6. It's not great. And uh, 6.5 from boys is actually decent for him. So I'll leave that for now. I'm looking at Thor being a little bit tired, but I don't really have anyone else, anyone else to replace him as. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. I mean, if we're going to lose a the game, then naturally we'll lose to an own goal. It doesn't even move. It's... What is that? Why are we playing musical statues? Immediate highlight. And an immediate highlight. Now, Block gets back for that one. Bridge, oh, well, hmm, this might be two. No, no, it isn't. Let's take down to a 6.4 for boys, so he's off. Just going to bob each of these on attack on opposite sides for the time being. Now, I know, he, I know he's just conceded the own goal, but I am tempted to take him off, but I don't think I will. I can't take Lopez off because McFarlane's not really firing either. Neither of the wingers are actually playing particularly badly, so I might just make the two substitutions for this one match and then leave it at that. Obviously, got to go attacking. And I'm going to shout, show some passion. Yeah, well, it took a while, but they showed some passion. And nothing's going to happen in this match. And it's finally over, actually. Oh, this looks even more suspicious now. 
after that intro thing. I'm trying to say you don't deserve a rest, but I actually don't know when the next match is. But oh, it's a week away. We're fine. Yeah, you don't deserve a rest. And our first league defeat since, well, in probably like a year, actually. Uh, Kidderminster was the 14th of September. So, yeah, first league defeat in over a year on, well, Halloween. That explains a lot. 17 games in this particular site. I think it was 45, 46 for the team or something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, 52. 52 matches without losing, which obviously includes when we lost to Salford, actually, rather than the league. But that's just matches in general. Well, Hendersford in the FA Cup. Hopefully we can bounce back from that particular disappointment. Looking at round one in general, it does seem to be a few Vanarama off. So, so some definite guaranteed Vanarama signs in the next round. Hopefully we are one of those. We take on Hendersford. Well, it's always gusty when I actually pay attention to the weather. Of course, we do, do get two extra substitutes. And the fact that Boom is booked, I am going to bring King in at this stage, I think. I was going to bring King anyway, but the, Boom will be the one who makes the way. So yeah, some switch arounds on the team, just because some people really ought to get some game time, I feel like. So in goal, we have Kento Inami, who actually isn't, strictly speaking, that much worse than Ted Smith. Newton, Romano, King, Dyer is the back line, both of those getting a step in at the fullbacks. Block in the defensive midfielder role. Green and Thor in the middle. Kempster and Bennett on the wings for this one. And McFarlane is up front. Hopefully, if I can get him a goal, that hopefully will help him kick on a little bit. And uh, I'll feel slightly more likely to sub, sub him on in the future. Of course, a few of those lacking match fitness, but hopefully this is the way to get them there. I really ought to honestly give them a little bit more game time in the unders. I'm going to be passionate and say media, because I really need to get them this win. Now, this is the FA Cup. We need to win this one. Oh, I didn't realise Thor was actually on the particularly tired after a four weeks work four weeks worth of work but he isn't here for the next one i don't think he, i think he's on international break so that's why i'm playing him now uh, because i think i have to rotate him out anyway for the next match regardless cousin dawson <sighs> well that's nearly a goal straight away for them what is happening i'm just gonna go attacking i'm gonna go attacking and i'm gonna shorten the just make a couple of tweaks in terms of our attacking play and then hopefully that will well, i mean it's only been six minutes but why is this highlight continuing there was no reason Oh, Kemp still really? It's a bruised ankle. You can play through that. That's not a problem. Well, it's another corner for them, and I'm getting kind of annoyed the fact that this is the first highlight I'm seeing for us. Like, all the, the only highlights I'm seeing are for them. There are two divisions below. Well, one division below us, but at the opposite end of it. Newton brings this corner in, and... Oh, corner. Th free kick. I know football. And half times arrived with nothing else happening, but we do actually... We did actually get back into that particular game, so it's a start anyway. I'm going to shout the man more of them because only a couple of them are motivated. We need all of them to be motivated. This is money in the bank when we get there. Why has Kempster been error prone today? Apparently now he's been booked as well for good measure. Well, 65 minutes has arrived with literally nothing happening. So Bennett's going to go to the opposite side. Stanley's going to come in on that right. I will make him inverted on this side just because. Brock hasn't been particularly sensational today either. I think we need proper striking talent up there. McFarlane once again. Inept. Making him advanced. I know he technically makes this area completely wide open but i want to see if we actually get us something those two changes for now and the final has been bad but i'm gonna to have to bring the sell on for thor who's booked and most tired oh newton's on a free kick 10 minutes to go it's not made his way in it's gone over the bar so it is a corner i think a lot of players are starting to get booked now which i don't like green swings it in no one's there of course and it hits their green sell bennett and that's gone nowhere oh well yeah, probably technically counted as a shot not sure been attacking this entire match and we've just literally done nothing. Cousin Dawson hoofs it up to Hopkins, who doesn't get through because King's there. Well, he passes that way back to Inami, and now I'm panicking slightly. This is a knockout game, and I'm slightly worried something's about to happen now. Romano, Nacelle. Okay, build up. Build this build this move up. Hold on to it, Nacelle. Hold on to it. I need a moment of your actual brilliance, which you do have occasionally. Green. Well, never mind. Our back line's on sevens, which is not good. Oh, there's a highlight a minute from time, and it's their throw in. Uh, please get the ball off them, please get the ball off them, please get the ball off them, please, please, please get the ball off them, get the ball off them. Panther, please get the ball off them. Romano has headed that forward to block. Block. Passes it back to Romano. Romano. Passes it all about to an army. No, go forwards, that's the wrong way. That's the wrong way, guys. King. Now on the ball. King, who it up to Lopez, doesn't get through to him, but blocks there to gather the second ball. Nacelle is in space. Run, Nacelle, run. He's not run. Lopez is in space now. Shoot, he scored. <sighs> Because 95 minutes, we've not scored in two games. It's basically three games without scoring. 
But it is like Percy Fisher is out of that particular hole with his 10th goal of the season. Double digits now. We're only in November, so that's good going for him so far. Lopez. And all nine of his goals so far before this were in the league, rather. In, we've not played any cup games. Why did I just say that? <sighs> Got away with it. Got away with it, and I'll be saying exactly that. That was a let-off. Got away with it. I very, very, will very quickly just show you the draw, by the way. £36,000 is always nice. And this is the furthest we've gone, because, of course, we got knocked out by Salford in this round last time. All right, here we go. This looks surprisingly barren, but Colchester Carlisle... I'm not sure how many... I don't think there's any upsets. Oh, Blackburn Lincoln's a bad one for Lincoln. Bath or Barrow, who clearly went to an extra round. Oh, so there's guaranteed Vanarama team in the third round, then. Looking through some more. Still not appeared. Hello, here we are. At home. To... Shrewsbury, who are League One. Well, that's the toughest one we've faced so far. Just out of curiosity, any any guaranteed Van Arama teams still in here? Morecambe and Wrexham. So we could have got Morecambe and Wrexham, but it was a very, very... Uh, Bromley, maybe, I'm not sure. I think, actually, no, they were the ones that got promoted. But, yeah, so it, it was a very, very, very slim chance at this stage of the draw for us to have gotten a non-league side again. Because Fard had already gone. Uh, the Dover all made... Uh, Dover... Maidstone had already gone. Let's draw the rest of them and uh, see what they get. Oh, Sutton, sorry. Sutton as well. Sutton was another guaranteed one yet to be drawn. Halifax versus Wrexham, actually. Two, two Vanarama teams. So there's two guaranteed Vanarama teams in the next round, in the third round, which is good for both of those and television general. So, Shrewsbury then, which slots in... Why well, it doesn't actually say yet. It will be on the 28th and it will be Bath. Well, that's the obvious one then, Shrewsbury. Uh, in, in regards to the one that I pair with it, I'll probably, do, I'll probably start with Shrewsbury and then do Maidenhead because I don't know. If this ends up going to a second tie, then of course then we can do the second tie uh, as well. So I'll start with Shrewsbury and then have Maidenhead pinged in after after it. Penciled in, sorry. I'll do Shrewsbury and then I'll pencil in Maidenhead, Maidenhead afterwards. Obviously, if the tie is decided in, this in the first attempt, then we'll do Maidenhead. If it's not decided, then I presume it's been played in the middle after directly afterwards or something. So we'll find out anyway. So until then, three games in between, we're